Oh, hello there. Um, I'm gonna attempt to make a charm, and uh, it's an artist charm. Let's see if I could zoom in. You know, it's so small. I want you guys to be able to see it. Uh, but uh, this is something that we're making and later on I believe it is Cindy Utter that will be telling us all about uh, what we're doing with these but I was asked to make some some charms and um, so that's what I'm gonna do um, I gotta stop saying um, that's me trying to put my thoughts together about what I want to say. And uh, this is a bezel, I think is what this is called. Um, that's pretty good. You know, uh, it's, uh, you know, just a metal piece that you can uh, hang it on a chain, you know, for a pendant or something. And it's, it's pretty... You know, it's about as big as a silver dollar, is what I want to say. But, um, I thought since this was, <clears throat> excuse me, for an artist uh, charm, um, I want to, I'm going to kind of do a, a color wheel. This brush is seeing better days. So basically, um, I'm going to paint this into a color wheel. And I tried experimenting about using markers, and that didn't work out too well. And I tried uh, watercolor, but that activates. Uh, and I got a little too much paint there. But, um, so I decided to go with acrylic. Paints. And, uh, so I want to use the primary colors for it. And before when I sketched out all the sections, you know, for the different colors, um, I couldn't quite color or cover up the pencil. Um, so, I don't want to move that. I, I have it in so close that I, if I were to move it, I would be out of shot very easily. And um, so I'm going to take a little red here. And I'm using a scrap piece of watercolor paper. Um, and I want to maybe turn it like so. So I get a you know I want to paint wedges which are just triangles on here and if I go out the outside line that's okay um, because we're going to cut it down to fit the size of the bezel. <clears throat> and let's see. I want... Um, okay. 
I, I sort of did that backwards from what I did last time. You know, I put the blue on that side, but that's okay. The important thing is just getting a little blue paint out here. Not too much water. And I'm really close to the top there. So we're going to do the blue over here. Still had water in it, darn it. But that's okay. So, and I just kind of look at it and say, okay, do I have equal parts of those? Um, colors and I could see that the red and the yellow I probably could make a little wider so because those are our primaries Usually I do blue on this side, but who says that we have to do it that way? So I'm just going to continue. And let's see. So, you know, when you mix red and blue together, you get a purple. Make sure that I did get the purple. And so I'm just going to get that nicely coated. And then, of course, when we mix the red and yellow together, which I should have probably did that first, find another brush, we get orange, and I have orange paint, so I'm going to use the orange. here why rinsed out my brush I wanted and I just try to eyeball it you know, the, you know, you could measure it out and uh, such, but I didn't want any of the lines th showing through. So that's the reason why I did it that way. Just to make sure that I got it up there. And then when we mix the blue and yellow. Um, yeah, this charm would be kind of neat, you know, to hang off of your uh, journal, your art journal. 
or just to hang it on a hook, you know, uh, by your desk or your computer. Or use it in, for a key ring, you know. All right. Now that is going to have to dry. So um, I'll uh, pause the camera and then I'll be back. Okay, I'm back. I dried it and then I started cutting it out. And uh, the thing about cutting it out is you want to cut a little bit on the inside of your pencil line that you did. And it's still probably a little uh, big to go in here. So, you know, you have to just kind of keep going and just trim off a little bit at a time. And uh, last time I used the watercolor paper, it kind of floated up in the solution that I'm going to put in there. So I think is what I'm going to do is maybe use just a little clear glue to uh, and go like that. You know, I'm just taking off little teeny weeny Hopefully I was on screen there. <laughs> um, lines, you know, just just trimming a little as I go to get it in there. And I'm going to place the yellow at the top. And I can see that needs to come off right there. Now maybe we can get it to go. So... And see, it's it's sort of a, a snug fit in there, but for right now, I don't, because it'll float up. So I'm just going to take a little bit of glue to, um, and this is clear glue. And I really kind of hope well, it seems to be at the other end. Okay. So maybe I'll do that. My grandkids. I, I think this will just kind of help hold it down, hopefully. I didn't put glue in the ones that I practiced with, um, and I want the yellow at the top. And just kind of really press down the edges. You know, just make sure that, you know, you can even take a something to do that with. And um, basically, uh, is what I did is I purchased a uh, this Mod Podge, um, what's it called? Uh, what do they even call it? Dimensional Magic is what it is. And there's the name of it. And 
then I'm just going to Cindy did a really good demonstration on how to fill these bezels um, but you just want to try not to make air bubbles so you do it slow seems to be bent over. Well, shoot. What's going on there? I need to find a, a pen to poke it. at the tip so we don't get air and then you just kind of I hope you guys can see what I'm doing there um, but I just kind of gently squeeze as I'm going and it comes out real cloudy like that And I have one little air bubble in the middle of it. And, um, and as what I've been doing is just take my finger, if, uh, I'm gonna make sure that that paper is down. And I just kind of keep my eye on it to see if any air bubbles. And if you could see there, um, there are a few of them. So I just, I, I take my finger and dab right over with the lightest touch to get the bubbles. And I'll watch it, you know, for a little while to make sure that there aren't any that come up. And uh, then you just have to leave it alone and uh, let it dry. Um, the directions, I think it's 24 hours or overnight or something like that. Um, fill space desired allowed to dry for 24 hours before handling and since it's a long time and you know I have animals and birds and dust and that float around so as what I did for the dry time was to just take you know I save these little plastic containers to, you know, put paint in or beads or whatever. And I just, you know, I invert, I, I put it over it so it keeps the dust off of it. And once that's dry, uh, then you can touch it. And, um, you know, this is a, a charm for uh, an uh, artist and maybe I could kind of set this off to the side um, and zoom out just a little maybe so you know I don't want I it needs to be level and so very carefully bring it over here and it's milky white right now you know it's very cloudy and but once it's dry it it dries clear like this and I forgot to put the black dot in the middle of that one but that's okay um, like I said, it's supposed to represent uh, the color wheel. 
and uh, since it's a, a charm or a trinket, you know, to go on your art bag or journal bag, you know, my granddaughter was over and she is capable of making friendship bracelets and I was surprised how fast she could make them. Let me show you this one. And, um, you know, I thought about using a chain, but I really didn't have anything that was strong enough. And, you know, once this uh, floss is knotted, you know, it's like macrame strength, and um, it, it'll last for a good long time. But, you know, I thought about uh, the artist and, you know, kind of asked what, uh, what their, uh, favorite colors were and, uh, what, uh, you know, what's their sign, what's their zodiac sign and, um, then I just added some other elements on there. Um, this particular person, let me, um, said that, uh, favorite c color w was a phthalo blue. And uh, I didn't have any phthalo blue beads. Um, and then somebody I noticed somebody else asked uh, about colors and they had mentioned that they like uh, phthalo blue cad red and cad yellow light and so I made a maybe I could zoom out just a little I'm probably off screen for all that oops not too far though um, you know, in this particular person, uh, zodiac sign or their, uh, you know, the stars that were shining um, this way, <laughs> working in a smaller area, uh, it was Capricorn. And on the back of this little metal char charm, it says ambitious, and then it's got the uh, the sign. Uh, for Capricorn and then I added you know like a charm uh, tree of life charm on there uh, because it represents family or your roots or uh, where you uh, where your roots are you know and um, I, I really like music and I ha had some of these little music uh, charms so I stuck that on there and also uh, a little um, charm that says courage and you know those are all really nice uh, things I thought and um, then the yin and yang sign, you know, for balance. Uh, I used to wear a yin and yang uh, necklace, and I would always kind of fiddle with it when I was a little stressed out, uh, reminding myself, you know, it's it's okay, the balance will come. And um, but anyways, that's my my video on. Uh, my charm that I made, uh, because, uh, Cindy Utter had asked me to, and I said, sure, I, I would give it a go. I immediately thought of all the bean beads and trinkets that I have, um, again, I find a lot of nice things at the secondhand store, and it was uh, it's either half off or 60% off day or something. They were doing a big sale, and they had a, a pretty good size 
box of beads and things uh, that they were selling and the the price tag on it uh, well if it was I think I spent forty dollars on the box so um, and that was half or sixty percent off um, so that kind of tells you how much uh, the secondhand store was asking for the box of supplies. Somebody just got rid of all their jewelry making supplies because it was quite a bit wire and you know the little loops and stuff to kind of hook everything together but now I'm getting sidetracked. So that that is uh, my video and um, you know if somebody doesn't want a particular thing on here it's easy enough to just bend the 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 wire loop and take it off um that's how i made it you know if it doesn't jive with how they're feeling but you know i i thought it turned out pretty cute and um you know my keychain has this little uh you know it's it, it's a metal hook uh, that you could uh, easily put on here and use that to hook it on your book or your journal somehow Let's see if I got my my keys right here this is the about the only thing that I have to go hunt up and find uh, you know, it's it's just this little, not the key, but the, the hook that's there. And I thought, well, that might be a good thing to put on there depending on where they want to put it. Um, so that's my video, and I hope this was what Cindy was looking for. So I like to say bye-bye now, and if you like this, give me a thumbs up, please. Bye-bye now.